Welcome to the Randy and Krista Show, news that makes you healthier. I'm Krista Arecchio. And I'm Randy Alvarez. And today we're talking about a, some research that was done. In fact, I think they stumbled on to uh, some of the research. But integrative doctors have found that when uh, with patients that get in accidents and they have brain swelling, whether it's a concussion, that some of the remedies that they use to reduce this brain swelling had a host of other benefits. And you take that to a healthy patient for prevention of stroke and, and, and other things that, the, and Krista has the studies in front of her and some of the research, so let's, uh, so even though we're talking about brain swelling, we're also talking about prevention of other things. Is that right? Exactly. It, well, we're talking about controlling inflammation yes. and inflammation being the root of all disease. But this is, a, it, it, like you said, it's a narrow topic of head injuries or brain swelling due to tumors or viruses. Um, or things like that, but the, the reason we're doing this is someone that you and I both know, um, JJ mm -hmm. Virgin, mm -hmm. her son got in a, a, a near fatal car accident about a year ago. And the story, if you guys may have seen it, it was on CNN and Sanjay Gupta just did it very recently, is that he had multiple surgeries and then ended up in a coma. And the doctors basically told her, she said the ER doc basically told her to let him go that he was going to have brain damage and that he wasn't going to come out of the coma. And being a father, being a parent, you're going to do everything within your power and then some to, to help your child. And her being in this field, she's got lots of friends who know so much about brain health. I mean, she knows so much about brain health. And so... I mean, she had people flying in and I don't know firsthand. I've talked to her only... I, I had her on my podcast but uh, and, and we're old friends from the old days, but she had, I'm following her on Facebook, I mean, she had doctors from all over the country flying in just to help her son. I know. That was life lighted so and beautiful. told he was going to die. Yeah. And I don't know much more about the story other than, I guess, the end result is he's doing really well. It's so beautiful how people will band together, and that's the purpose and the point, and it's, it's why we're all doing this. So why are we doing what we're doing to make, this is make it or break it. This child's not going to come out of a coma. He's going to have severe brain damage for the rest of his life, or he's not. And this can be the power of if we blend West, the Western medical establishment with the natural therapies, and if we can really work together as a force, and I think her son Grant is a living example of that so he you just got back from this meeting so it's fresh in your mind it's fresh in so my I'm mind kind of, I'm really interested to hear and what they showed the clip um, when, when uh, at JJ's conference they showed the clip at the end and it moved ev all of us to tears and it's really what you can do and they first started off talking about progesterone which I know you think is very controversial so that's a female hormone but they say that women women stroke victims recover much quicker than men because women have more of the of the hormone progesterone which actually controls brain swelling and brain inflammation okay so they actually gave JJ's son from the CNN uh, story they gave him progesterone when when they said there's nothing the doctor said there's nothing more we can do you have to give the brain time okay. and you know JJ right mm -hmm. she said of course there's got to be something you can do and the story says that they gave him some progesterone and then he actually started coming out of the coma was able to speak a little bit mm -hmm. then they switched to these to these studies really well backed up by Barry Sears are you familiar with Barry yes. Sears Met him, uh, interviewed him. Interviewed him, amazing, integrative MD. And so then, then fish oil comes into play. So he's been studying fish oil and a big proponent of it. You know, lots of studies say, is it good for you? Is it bad for you? He's been studying it for years. And there was a big mining accident in 2006 where all of these guys that were in the accident were ending up with brain damage. And that's where they tested on this one particular person using 20 grams of fish oil a day. And he was able to recover and he was the only one who recovered. So they started giving Grant Virgin from what I understand of the story, 20 grams, which is a lot. We're talking like 40 fish oil pills mm -hmm. through a feeding tube. And they say two days later, he was actually able to call his mom and to speak. And so they continued this therapy and it's a year well, later. He weeks, and he's where his eyes weren't open, uh, according to the story that I read. I mean, he was in bad shape Yeah. for a while. Yeah, and this is, I mean. It was a lot of therapies. I mean, <clears> he was, I know they were like smelling like lavender and they were doing a lot of things to wake up his brain and 
heighten his senses. Sure, I'm sure there was an arsenal, and this is just a, you know of support. So progesterone to had an anti-inflammatory effect. Progesterone had an anti-inflammatory effect and then fish oil and so the theory goes or Barry's research says so the brain is made up of 30% fatty acids and so obviously you must give the brain fatty acids to strengthen those and to support the myelin sheath and the neurochemical Isn't messengers. Isn't made up of triglyceride or, and also uh, cholesterol? Yeah. Big exactly. Percentage. Which is why cholesterol, that's a topic for another show, why cholesterol is not a bad thing. You know in the mainstream it's positioned to be bad but it's very helpful. So how does this apply to other issues, like you were mentioning, you know, like meningitis or whatever? Well, so meningitis or encephalitis or anything like that, those viruses, they cause brain swelling. And okay. so you, would, you, you have to shrink brain swelling as quickly as possible if we want to protect the brain. Same thing if you've gotten a concussion. So that basically applies to s such a wide population. We've all, many of us have had a concussion before. And you, you have you? Have, I have. Interesting. I have had one, one time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fish oil basically controls prostaglandin function. And so inflammation throughout the whole body. And if you can keep inflammation at bay and the circulatory, it's also blood thinner, natural blood thinner. You can keep circulation flowing. You feel better. You look better. Better skin, hair, and nails. You can think straight. Uh, it balances your cholesterol. So your, your bad LDL cholesterol, mm -hmm. the small particle, that's the bad cholesterol, it, it can help with that, and it can also help build your good cholesterol. How much fish oil do you take a day? I take 1,000 milligrams, but I also eat fish three or four times a week. Maybe not as much as you eat fish, Randy. Well, I try to but eat But I eat high quality fish. fish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, because there's the whole heavy metal thing that's in fish and things like that. Okay, yeah. so supplement was fish oils. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? What else did uh, was your takeaway from from that meeting? Uh, cinnamon was Let's talk about cinnamon. was a takeaway, and it necessarily wasn't from that story or from that article, but the the neuroprotective properties of cinnamon that I wasn't aware of. I've seen that it can help with cholesterol. I, I use it in my practice. You do? I it helps with blood sugar. I have my clients put it in their coffee. Um, but then there, is a, there was a study that I read as I was prepping actually for this Fox segment and it talked about stroke victims and when basically you're getting a stroke, you're starved of oxygen, your brain's starved from oxygen, mm -hmm. it's starved from glucose. Okay. And so they measured after five hours there was a 40% decline in brain function and so they had a control group and an experiment group and the control group they just let it keep going being starved of oxygen and glucose within 90 minutes it was it was 34 percent worse than it was before okay. and once they introduced cinnamon at the 40 percent mark then 90 minutes later it hadn't progressed at all so what's the mechanism that's the part i can't figure out so and also yeah. what type of cinnamon are they sprinkling it on something mixing it with water this article didn't say but from my research there's two types of cinnamon there's ceylon and there's cassia and it's very it's much cheaper and more proliferate the cassia which is what you find in most most stores but in some health food stores and certainly online you can find ceylon a lot of times i think even costco has it it comes from vietnam um, and that's the cinnamon that will protect your blood sugar and that you really can use as medicine. But I wonder, do you know, I mean, the, the part that I question is what is the mechanism? How is it, what is it doing? Yeah, I, I can't answer that. I don't know what the mechanism of action is that is slowing that, it's feeding the cells. So, I mean, a theory is if you're starved from oxygen and you're starved from glucose, if cinnamon can help to balance blood sugar by, what is it doing? Shuttling insulin better, more efficiently into the cell, into the brain. So it's maybe so working it's, on the insulin receptors, mm -hmm. possibly? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are other uh, things that can reduce inflammation? Brain inflammation, inflammation of the body. Inflammation in general? Yeah. Have I ever made you our turmeric ginger lemonade? No. Okay, I'm gonna make that for okay. you. Um, or that's gonna be your homework, because you know, we each have to do something that makes us healthier, All news right. that makes you healthier before our next show. So it's turmeric lemonade? Yes, so on thewholejourney.com. Okay. Okay, you click on recipes, you click on beverages, and the recipe is right there. So you guys can all make this at home, and so, Turmeric is probably the single best dietary anti-inflammatory that we have. Okay. 
I was on a plane, I invented this recipe, and I was watching Andrew Wild's Healthy Aging yeah. uh, DVD, and he started studying the longest living people in the world. Yeah. In Sardinia, Italy, and Okinawa, Japan. And they really, when he started focusing on the Japanese, he talked about how they're using mass amounts of turmeric in the form of a drink on a daily basis. And when they measure them at a cellular level, they're measuring 25 years younger than they actually are chronologically. Because, you know, you age based upon inflammation, and that's how we can measure it. So I thought, okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, I've never heard this before, by the way. People drinking a turmeric, 100-year-olds drinking a turmeric drink. I haven't either, so I started researching it. Turmeric? No, no foods are rich in turmeric because it's actually a spice. So the Indians, yeah, so, I mean, the Indians have the lowest rate of Alzheimer's because turmeric protects the brain so much. And their Indian food, they're having turmeric on a daily basis. Is that right? So lowest, uh, so turmeric. So you have this thing, you mix it with... So, you, so we're going go to go to About three times a year you can find fresh turmeric root at Whole Foods or a health food store. And it Does looks it just like ginger. Because you say three times a year? It doesn't stay. Well, when it's in season. It's really when, when it's in season and when they can get it. And really? so um, a lot of times in the winter, like now, they'll be out of it. Really? Mm -hmm. But there's every day of the year, there's always turmeric on the shelves. Always turmeric on the shelf. So are yeah. you saying that that turmeric is you can make, yes. bad okay. turmeric? So I say fresh is always best. You get the fresh ginger root and you peel it. You get the fresh turmeric root and you peel it. Oh, really? And then you slice oh, so it. Oh, so you get the turmeric root. And you steep it in hot water, okay? For 15 minutes and then you see all the color it releases all the nutritive properties into the water then you can remove the ginger and the turmeric root okay you squeeze the juice of a lemon in there you add some stevia and you can have it hot or cold and it's turmeric ginger lemonade and it's wonderful for brain health brain swelling inflammation throughout the entire body is it available right anybody now? with arthritis really not to interrupt but i mean is i'm excited it about because i'm buying the turmeric that is you know in it, the spice it, sure of course but that's might be dead i mean it's not that it's dead but fresh is always going to be best you have to trust your brand spicely and the spice hunter are two really good brands of spices and you guys at home throw out your spices every year do not keep these around because they're going to lose their nutritive properties keep the rack throughout the spices the spices <laughs> <laughs> keep the rack yes that's cool right, okay good one, Randy. so back to this root okay so you three times a year is this the time of year um, sometimes in the winter it's hit or miss. I was in Whole Foods last night, I should have checked. But you know what I'll do? Sometimes I'll buy a whole bunch. I mean, if you're going to peel turmeric, your hands are going to become orange. So I'll just peel a whole bunch and then keep Cheetos. it in the freezer. Same thing with Cheetos. Okay. But, Nobody should be eating Cheetos watching our show. Well, one time. I was trying to, I, my ex-wife, I was um, eating Cheetos behind her back. And she comes in, she goes, were you eating, because I was on a big diet, another one of my big diets. Were you eating Cheetos? You're and I said, no. She goes, why are your dieting? hands orange? And I didn't know about the turmeric. But back to, okay, like so you buy the root, caught in the cookie jar. you can buy enough of them and store them in your refrigerator. Well, like anything fresh, it's going to mold if you, if you just keep it in your fridge. So I would say as soon as you get home, peel them, okay. put them in a, a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware, and then put them in the freezer. And that way you can have fresh herbs and you can let them thaw out and you can make this throughout the year. So, I mean, because turmeric is one of those hot spices that everybody seems to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you make it. You drink it, and I interrupted you earlier, mm -hmm. but you also, it, you're saying it help in prevention or on, op, delaying the onset of Alzheimer's? Yes. You said? Are these studies, or I mean? Oh, are, there's a lot of studies, on, and uh, I know it's a topic that's close to your heart. It's, it, yeah. it can really help a lot of people, and um, they really just show what, what it can do for the neuroprotective properties in the brain and it can now, you slow feel good already age related brain degeneration okay. you feel good already do you notice a difference when you like is there a bit of a rush like no, you feel like good not a rush you would think about like it like clear? um you, like uh nature's ibuprofen you're not looking for a rush or an energy but there's sometimes if you start to feel achy and, and things are sluggish it's a sign of inflammation if you want to take advil or tylenol or something like that this could be an alternative and especially really helpful for those with rheumatoid arthritis and people who are in pain. What about women PMS, things like that? Sure, it can help with PMS, but fish oil is actually, going back to fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids are, are more helpful with menstrual cramps and, and things like that. And I always have women double their B vitamins around PMS. Okay. Um, you're losing progesterone 
and uh, so B vitamins and fish oil. I'm not, about fish oil, because I, uh -huh. and I, and I want to ask you this, because I, I look at labels, I, I usually buy my fish oils from a specific brand, but I'm noticing now the labeling, now some are purified, it'll say mm -hmm. high triglyceride form, but some are purified and some aren't. Right. So obviously you're going to want the purified, but... Uh, well, I actually would say not no? the purified. No, yeah, tell me why. I was going to ask mm -hmm. you about that. So this is a big deal, and I get asked the question a lot about Fukushima and radiation. And is fish safe even? And then also the heavy metals that are, we're finding in fish. And so, yes, in fish oil, if there are metals present, they have to test them for metals. They'll put it through a pretty intense process of molecular distillation to pull out the metals. But this is why fish oil looks that pale yellow color when you buy it in one of the big box stores, typically because they have to also take out the antioxidant that's so good in fish oil called astroxanthin. It gives it that rich amber color. Mm -hmm. So you can't take out the bad without also taking out the good. Like Nordic Naturals. They are now mm -hmm. labeling it as purified. Are you saying that through the purification process, they're taking out some of the good stuff too? Is that your thought? They're taking out astroxanthin, which is the antioxidant, basically, in fish oil. Nordic Naturals is a great brand. I don't have anything against it, but I would, I usually recommend in the health food store, a new chapter, Holmega or Barleen's. And you can see that those are a rich amber color, and it's just where they're getting their fish. If they're getting it from Norway, or where are they getting their fish, and then they're testing, everything has to go a pretty So what pretty is your favorite testing. fish oil then? You said the Barleen's or the? Barleen's, New Chapter, and then Green Pastures is we have used that in our practice for years. And that's a fermented fish oil. It's fermented cod liver oil, very high in vitamin D. And because it's fermented, the body really has to do zero conversion. It just uses it. Every one of my prenatal plans, you know, I have a prenatal book coming out next month. I've been testing this out on women for years and with brain health of their children. And so green pastures, uh, is very close to my heart because it's fermented. So for people that have had a brain injury, they were in a car accident, they had a concussion 20 years ago, you know, they're talking a lot about it in the NFL. Uh, Same kind of pro protocol. I mean, as I wouldn't as, say 20 grams of fish oil no, a but, day like in a, with an acute situation, but, but... But you may want to really go... You may want to increase your fish oil for a period of time. Krill oil? You like krill oil? Are you I kidding don't, me? I don't, you tell me why you no, like no, no, krill oil. I, no, I, what I'm saying is I always feel like it's a more concentration of the good stuff. Uh -huh. But you tell me what you've heard about krill oil. It's, I, I can't really speak to it. Um, I kind of felt like it was a fad that, that passed for me. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you have to tell me. I think it was, I'm just, that's all I'm going to say is I think krill oil was, was a fad that, that was a, passed. Because it's supposedly the krill, I think it was in New Zealand and there's an ozone, you know, thinning and, they're near, they swim near the top, and what was happening is that there was more antioxidants in the krill. Well, and oil. the idea is that a bigger fish has more toxicity because, because of it's what eating, it's eating, right, but krill right. is the end of the chain, so I can, I can necessarily understand that argument. Because um, it's more expensive. Krill oil is more expensive. Oh, sure, because it takes a lot more to They're create smaller. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But, yeah. but in the circles that you hang out with, all these nutritionists, when you guys are hanging out in integrative docs, they're, nobody's saying, hey, krill oil or no krill oil? No. And I mean, I really can't speak to it either way. I've never used it or really read studies on krill oil. What about but flax it's not flaxseed oil big... over a, you know, fish oil? Because I know the vegans, and you've got a few vegan friends yourself, right? I mean, you do. Sure. I so have all kinds of friends. are there any research to show that the fish oil is better than like the Barleen's flaxseed oil? Well, fish oil is already converted. And so you're talking about, you're talking about um, EPA and DHA. That's yeah. the, those are the omega-3s, those two, EPA, DHA, that feed the brain that are in fish oil. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about a plant-based form of omega-3s, you're talking about ALA alpha linoleic acid. And so there's a conversion process that the body has to do. And so you end up losing a lot of the omega-3s. So let's say you're going to take 10,000 milligrams of flax, of flaxseed oil. Maybe you're only getting two to 3,000 milligrams of actual omega-3s from that. And so, of course, you should get your omegas through flax and hemp. And I love chia. Personally, that's my favorite plant-based way to get omega-3s. But um, 
if I have a choice for myself or for one of my clients, I would always recommend are there getting your omega threes from an animal source. That we are willing to take fish oil, or is that like a big time? Don't do it. There's some exceptions to the rule, and I really will honor and respect anyone's way of eating. I think there's, um, and I really respect the the moral part of being vegan mm -hmm. and um, and not wanting to take a life to support your own. So I, I can really respect that, and it depends. You know, I've seen a lot of people who are really sick, especially in these last couple of years. And I actually had one woman who was living, you know, this is Encinitas, and so we're very conscious and, and progressive in this. And she was living in a vegan household and really struggling oh and suffering. And I said, I, I, actually, I can't work with you unless you're willing to consume animal products. I when knew I could help. When you struggling and suffering, what, not getting better? Yeah, with chronic heavy metal toxicity and active viruses. And she literally was in bed for, for 16 to 18 hours a day. And so, yeah, it was really hard to get better. Her adrenals were shot. Her hormones were on the fritz. And, and just the, the emotional breakdown that so comes So you told with her, that. unless you're willing to eat some... Well, I, yeah, well, I mean, I needed to use heavy duty food as medicine with her. And so using the higher quality fats and using things like bone broth and having her switch to, to certain animal products for when I had someone in my office that sick, you know, my job is most of the time to meet people where they are and help them get better. So and you believe it's it, the human diet, the humans were designed to eat these animal products like fish. I think that we can thrive, especially in today's world. Yeah. Well, not all humans, but yeah, I mean, hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers. There are some people, let's say people with blood type A, for example, they can synthesize protein better from plant-based sources than, let's say, somebody okay. with blood type O. And, I mean, everybody is their own universe and their own biochemistry and emotions and lifestyle and all of that. But I have seen... People progress so much did you quicker. Fit, okay, that, that woman that was living in that vegan house, right? Yeah. You switched her over mm -hmm. to a moderate, like lean protein kind of a diet, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Did she get better? Yeah, she did. And like it was a big step. I mean, well, right now she's still working, but she's 50% better. She's still working on her nutrition. <coughs> Excuse me, but she moved out of that house. I mean, that's a big deal to make a decision to move out of the house and shift your moral perspective. Mm -hmm. But to gain 50% of your life back, she's only in her late 30s. To, and to now, actually, she's another, she's another one. You know, just like Marcy, the story of she's now gaining her health, and now she wants to become a health counselor. Nice. And so this journey, everything happens for a reason. Okay, so with her, I mean, did you wean, for, for people that are vegan but they're very sick, would, be, would fish be your first um, recommendation. Oh, I have this woman I having mean, grass-fed beef and grass -fed beef. you know kind of right out of the gate three times a week grass-fed beef and have her on enzymes to make sure that she can actually digest it and get the nutrients but sure you can start and with she says fish she feels that's better usually right the gateway and she says she feels better right away yeah, she started to feel quite a bit better and so this chicken bone broth you know with the collagen in there and, and in the feet that's that's kind of the first chicken place. bone broth with the feet in there <laughs> that's the first you place brought this up on, on, that on I start. at least two or three shows yeah. Why would I want to take that stuff? You should be taking it because it will build the mucosal lining within the intestinal tract. And we know that if we have good mucosa, we have a good immune system. That's why I take high dose vitamin C because there's a lot of studies that it will help build collagen yeah. throughout your body. Right. That's my thoughts there. And you know, I mean, I have an iron stomach, iron gut, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I could eat whatever. So to be I'd careful. love to run some labs on you. Oh, jeez. See if you really have an iron gut. So I might be a mess and I don't know it. I don't catch colds and all that. I might be a mess. You might And you be would Randy. be secretly hoping, <laughs> I'm going to teach Randy that he doesn't have an iron gut. Just because it doesn't hurt, just because it didn't catch a cold. Well, why would I be secretly Does hoping that? I don't know. I would only hope because that you, you would learn more brag. about yourself. But if I brag, you would say, I want to run a test on you to see if you really yeah, have an iron gut. I so secretly that you do. Well, I think that there's, there's so a lot that a lot you can learn. I want to get you to a place. I believe I have some bad bugs. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> I've got some issues. Well, you're always, you know, gargling in hydrogen peroxide and using a water pick. <laughs> I'm not so you might that. not have that That's many like bad bugs. It's like every couple, two times a week. Like with you and your coffee, a couple times a week. I do that a couple uh, okay. of times a week. You gargle with hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Well, well, I, I did that you. when I was sick, by the way, because of you. Okay. I think it helps me get better quicker. But back to you. I would like to see you at a place where you don't feel like you have to diet. 
You know what? I don't feel like yeah. I'm dieting. I just have to watch what I'm eating. When I call my idea of dieting now uh-huh. isn't calorie restriction. It's just eating clean. Yeah. So when I say I've got a diet, I've got to eat clean. Mm-hmm. You know, because I have a 12 year old, mm-hmm. and sometimes you know it's like he has his friends over. And I want to please them. I get him pizza the other day, right? And I'm looking at the pizza. I I didn't do it. Get them pizza at Pandora or Blue Ribbon. I've tried the gluten-free, gluten-free. pizza of these poor guys, and, and I can't fool them. He they would like it. Blue Ribbon. They use the double zero flour from Europe. But I think they're adding, a, in the good gluten pizza that I've had, uh-huh. it's sugar. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. It's like you're eating pancakes. Yeah. So what's worse, the gluten or the sugar? Well, maybe you should Krista, get them both I mean, What out. is it? You're making me choose the lesser so of those you never, two evils? So you never have pizza? Well, when I eat pizza around here, I go to Blue Ribbon, and it's right? it's high quality pizza, okay. and so they're you know they're they're even making their cheese there, and they get the double zero flour from Europe, so it's not that modern wheat that we're eating; it's ancient wheat, and okay. I'm fine. And um, yeah, I mean, I am from New Jersey, and okay. I'm Italian, so if so I go back there, I'll have we're out of the time. Pizza. We have a minute, but the top of the show, we're talking about uh, reducing inflammation in your brain. Reducing, yes. I, th- I think that's what we're talking about. And so this anti-inflammatory diet includes uh-huh. fish oils. Yes. It includes uh, getting off of gluten and dairy. Mm-hmm. Kind of eating things that don't, you know, raise insulin and cause inflammation. Turmeric. Getting turmeric in your diet. Getting ginger in your diet. Fish oil. Garlic. Like we talked about cinnamon. I mean, these are really, they're spices. Lots of cinnamon. These are spices that belong in the medicine cabinet. And the takeaway is that this can make or break acute health situations. And so that's the power of really genuinely using food as medicine. Okay, good. And that's and that's kind of your tagline, right? Yeah. Use food as... Is, we need a paradigm shift that, is this food supporting my health or is it taking away from my health? Not, does this taste good or does it not? Because if you can start to shift, that's when a diet becomes a lifestyle. You don't have to think so hard good. about it. This probably happens to you all the time because we're talking about an anti-inflammatory diet. People say, Randy, who do you know in Canada? I mean, you know, if somebody's very sick, they don't know what it is, maybe it's Lyme disease, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And the fact of the matter, and tell me, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, this is the inside scoop with integrated medicines docs all over the country, functional medicine docs, and like Mark Hyman, that no matter what the disease is, they're going to want to kill the bad bugs in your mm-hmm. intestine. I mean, they're going, you know, and, and with, you know, things like garlic, things you t- oregano, but they're mm-hmm. going to want to mm-hmm. give you with lean proteins, good organic, low glycemic vegetables, supplements to heal the gut, right? Anti-inflammatory things like fish oil, a good multivitamin, food-based, mm-hmm. and everything seems to get better. Am I right? I mean, no dairy, no gluten. I mean, isn't that kind of no matter the fanciest people in the world, this is kind of what they do. And there's immune boosters, as, as you mentioned, things like you know the kombucha uh, mushrooms and the different mushrooms. I mean, you know more about it than anybody. The reishi mushroom, maitake, shiitake. Yeah. Kombucha is a Probiotics. Drink. Mm-hmm. These are things you can do that are outside, that don't grow in the garden, but things that you can take. Yeah, yeah. There's, and it's so much of it is just learning about this world. And people think, oh, I can't, I can't do this and I can't do that. But that's if hopefully we can do that with this show, is show the world of things that you can do and what's out there and, and start to shift it. And it's detox, as you say, off of all the artificial sweeteners. In fact, all the artificial everything. Yeah. including GMOs. Get the chemicals I out. I would go, look, I'd go to her website and hear your talk, our discussion on GMOs. I learned so much. Was that, that. W- w- when Jeffrey Smith was on our show? Yeah. 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 He's fantastic. And so you guys can watch that. Uh, lots of stuff at thewholejourney.com on GMOs okay. and also on our YouTube channel, Randy right. and Krista Show. Well, we have a show and, and we're, we're uh, airing these every day, a couple times a day. If you have to check your local listings, you could also go to... Uh, uh, our website at wellnesshour.com. We're going to start uh, posting the air times there and what cities because we're going Perfect. across the country. Good. So. I'm getting that question. Final message, Krista? Final message. I mean, food can be your medicine to the point where it can save your life or it can be the slowest form of poison. So make at least one positive shift every single day. Okay. News that makes you healthier. You're watching the Randy and Krista show. We'll see you next time.